R is a popular and powerful statistical software and programming language. Other programming languages have the strengths. For example, C++ is extremely fast and Python and Java are widespread in the industry world. One advantage of R over its competitors is the vast number of statistical packages available that can greatly support you in any statistical analysis. If a statistical technique exists, chances are there's an R package for it that you can use. Another fundamental advantage of R is its graphical capability. Even the Financial Times and the BBC use R to produce charts and infographics for their publications. In this video, we will download R, explore the R Studio interface and try some basic functions. If you've never used R, I hope that this video will save you some time in getting familiar with the R software. I promise to guide you from the very beginning, so here we are. The first step is, of course, to download the R software. Go to the webpage www.rproject.org. The download link is very visible from the page. Click on it. I don't think this is a critical choice, but you should choose one of the mirrors offered for your country. And then the R version suitable for your system. I'm using a MacBook Pro, therefore I will pick the Mac version. Pick the latest release of the software. Fast forward 60 seconds and R is ready to be installed. Amazing! Click on the package. If you trust these guys as I do, the installation will take only a few seconds. R now appears among your applications. At this point, you could go on and download R Studio, but it's good to see what R looks like first. Click on the R icon. As you can see, the plain R interface is pretty basic. You only have one window, which is called the console. The console will also be one of the four windows of the R Studio interface. I like to think about the console as a powerful programmable calculator. You can literally type in mathematical operations as you do with the calculator and press enter to see the results. It's a programmable calculator as you can assign letters with values. You can do this with the command lower sign minus sign, which looks like an arrow. We assign the value on the right of the arrow to the variable the arrow is pointing at. We can also define a variable as a vector which is an ordered list of elements, numbers in this case. The command C stands for combine or concatenate and allows you to combine numbers to form a vector. To inspect what's inside a variable, type the name of the variable in the console and then press enter. V is a list of four numbers in this case, as we expected. The R console is a powerful calculator, as it gives you access to hundreds or thousands of functions. A function can act on your variables. The simplest examples could be the functions mean, median, max, or bar. Note that the round brackets are used to apply a function to a predefined variable. Don't forget to press enter to get the results. While virtually you can do everything with this plain version of R, I strongly recommend to download R Studio as it provides you with a more user-friendly interface and it greatly improves your workflow. To download R Studio, visit www.rstudio.com products R Studio download. Pick the free R Studio desktop option and the version suitable for your system. The download should only take a few minutes. Click on the package and drag the R Studio icon into Applications if you're using an iOS operating system. R Studio is installed. Let's see what it looks like. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see a window you should be familiar with. It's the R console. The console is exactly the same as in the plain R. We can use it as a calculator, carry over operations, define variables and, of course, use functions. As anticipated, RStudio has many features that will improve your user experience. From the Environment tab, you can have an overview of all the variables you have defined. For example, here we can read that V is a vector of numbers. It has four entries, and we can actually also read the different entries, as it's a rather short list. 
to clean up the environment, you can use the command rm list equal ls. This is useful when you're about to start a new project, but be aware you will lose all the unsaved variables. From the history tab, you can type the name of a variable or a function and find out all the occurrences where you've used that variable or function. This is very useful when you're working with a long project. Double click on a specific line and press enter to run that segment of your code again. Let's see now the most important window of our studio, the script. The first time you use RStudio, you will have to open your, your first script by clicking on the white page button at the upper left corner of your screen. While the console is useful to type a single line of code with a script, we can easily deal with several lines of code. A script is like a white canvas that you use to write the long code of your project. Opening a new script is like opening a new document in words or pages. It's very useful to insert comments on a script, for example, to help another person understand your code. This is done by tapping the hashtag at the beginning of a line. The text following the hashtag will turn green. R will know this is not code it has to deal with, but just a comment. Note that if you press enter while you're writing a script, nothing will happen, except you start a new line of code. If you want to run a single line from the script, you will have to press Command plus Enter on a Mac, or Control and Enter on a PC. The command data iris defines a variable iris that contains a table of data about flowers. This is an inbuilt dataset in R, useful for practicals and demonstrations. Press Command and Enter, R runs the line of code, and you can see the new variable from the environment tab. To check what's inside the variable iris, type iris on a new line of the script and then inspect its content by running the line. Remember, command, enter. As this dataset contains 150 rows, it's easier to inspect it with the function add that will give you just an overview of the first few lines. You can access a specific entry of the table iris by specifying a row and a column in squared brackets. In this case, the first row, third column coordinate corresponds to 1.4, that is the petal length of the first flower. You can remove the row coordinate to access the full third column. It will be a list of 150 values. Let's define the variable petal length as a vector containing the values of all the petal lengths of the 150 flowers. See the newly defined variable in the environment. We can compute the mean and other summary statistics of the petal length values using R functions. Don't forget to run each line of the code using command enter. In R, there are plenty of functions for data visualization. The function hist plots a histogram from a vector of numerical values. From the plots tab, you can visualize the result, which in this case is pretty basic. Most functions in R have a variety of parameters that you can specify. For example, using the function hist, you can set the parameter breaks to 30 if you want the histogram to have exactly 30 bars. Remembering all the function parameters is difficult and also not necessary. Your dearest friend in RStudio is the Help tab. Typing hist in the search feature, you will get a brief description of the function a list of its parameters and their meaning. The help also provides some examples of how functions are used, but you can always find plenty more examples by googling the function. Define the variable petal width as the vector of petal width values of the flowers. Another basic but fundamental graphical function is plot. This function plots a set of points from specify, specified x coordinates, in this case the petal lengths, and y coordinates, in this case the petal widths. Optional parameters of the plot function are, for example, the color, 
and the type of the points. R Studio comes equipped with a rich variety of functions, but sometimes you will need to download and install additional packages of functions. Installing a new pa package is a bit like downloading a new app for your iPhone. To download a package, go to the Package tab, click the Install button and find the package you want to install. ggplot2 is a powerful graphical package that I want to install. After installation, don't forget to tick the name of the package you want to use from the system library list. Clicking the name of the package prompts a page with all the functions in that package in alphabetical order. ggplot2, in particular, contains the function qplot, which is similar to the plain plot function, but, well, the output is generally nicer. You can navigate between the plots using the arrows. Our project is complete. From the Files tab, you can save your script. In order to do so, you need to find the folder where you want to save your work. Click on the bottom More and then set the chosen folder as Working Directory. Click on the Save Current Document button to save your script. You can now close the script. To load a script in our studio, just click on its name from the Files tab.